Good morning, everyone, and welcome to day six and stop six of our Great Lakes road trip. Uh, we are here at Garden River First Nations. And just a reminder, uh, submit your questions into our Padlet and you can share anything that you've been doing behind the scenes with Great Lakes Road Trip 2022. Um, so we're here with Aaron. Hi, Aaron. Would you like to introduce yourself and Oakley? Hello. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Aaron Jones. I'm from Garden River First Nation, and this is my friend Oakley. Uh, I work for the Garden River Lands and Resources Department as the Fish and Wildlife Coordinator. And uh, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, invasive sea lamprey. Mm -hmm. So what can you tell us about lamprey? Why are they in uh, the Great Lakes? Yeah, yeah. Well, th they're in the Great Lakes because um, uh, as humans started to develop the Great Lakes uh, that opened up uh, the St. Lawrence sea Seaway. So uh, lamprey used to be a oceanic species mm -hmm. that would live in fresh water and go to salt water. But since the seaways opened up, uh, they were able to come into the Great Lakes and actually survive their entire life within fresh water. And because of the lack of predators here and the good quality habitat for them to breed, uh, they ended up uh, just their population started to explode and they ended up going all across the Great Lakes. Fantastic. Well, I guess maybe not fantastic, but um, so yeah, we're here in Garden River and we're actually on a river as you can maybe pan behind you, Annie. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the location and then maybe uh, about some sea lamprey in the area? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so this is uh, uh, what, what you're looking at right now is the St. Uh, St. Mary's River and we are uh, in the Garden River First Nation Reserve. And the Garden River is actually just a little upstream of this location right here. And uh, it's, it's estimated that uh, sea lamprey have been here since the 40s, actually, uh, since wow. the 1940s. And yeah, yeah, that's, that's when they started coming over. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, maybe I can see that we have some um, kind of interesting things off to the side. Maybe we can move over and you can show us uh, some things about the lamprey. Yeah, for sure. So I do have one right behind me here, <laughs> a real sea lamprey. This is um, a crochet model of the sea lamprey. So you can see those little black dots are its gills. That, that first black dot is his eye. And then they have a couple of little fins here. So they do look quite a bit like an eel. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see some, some real life ones here in mm -hmm. just a second. And if you've seen our videos before, we talked to Dr. Cook in Ottawa and he talked about the American eel, uh, which is a native species in Ontario. But we're gonna be talking about this invasive sea lamprey. And what do we have here? Yeah, so uh, th that's a good point uh, about about uh, eels and sea lamprey. They do look very similar. And we also actually have native lamprey that live within our rivers. So we do have a, 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 a different type of lamprey that it looks very similar to these invasive, invasive lamprey, except for they don't cause the ecological devastation that uh, uh, these invasive sea lampreys do. <laughs> so over here, we actually have some sea lamprey eggs. Don't know how well I can see that. <laughs> Uh, so those are sea lamprey eggs. Um, every uh, every sea lamprey female can lay approximately a hundred thousand of these. Wow. So that's one of the reasons why they're so good at invading new areas because they lay a lot of eggs. And then when they hatch, they turn into these little wormy-looking creatures here. And when they're in this stage of life. Uh, they actually burrow into the sand, and they're not too harmful. They're actually just filter feeders at this stage of life. So what, uh, what that means is they filter water through their gills, and they capture the nutrients within the water, and that's how they survive. So um, they do that for the first three to five years of their life, and once they get big enough, they eventually will turn into these guys. Um, so we will whole bunch of them in, in this jar here and uh, you can see I don't know they're probably about six to eight inches long here so when they get this big um, they travel from uh, little tiny creeks in the tops of rivers they migrate downstream until they get to uh, the big water the Great Lakes uh, from there they actually develop uh, little mouths that have uh, that have teeth on them that allows them to latch onto uh, native fish and actually uh, drink the blood of, of native fish. So it's kind of creepy and weird. <laughs> and uh, eventually, uh, as they continue eating fish, they will get to this size. Wow. 
And this is a, this is a full grown uh, adult sea lamprey. Uh, this one is uh, this one is a spawner, so it's ready to uh, it's ready to reproduce. And as you can see there, it has. Can you see that? <laughs> you can see that. Uh, it has uh, a suction cup oh, wow. for a face that has a lot of little teeth in there. So they could actually uh, suction right onto the sides of animals, and they'll stay they'll stay on uh, on a native fish until they are full or until the fish actually dies. Wow. So they are um, fairly fierce predators. Um, they, they, really, they really enjoy eating lake trout, which a lake trout is a native species of fish uh, to the Great Lakes. And yeah, uh, and unfortunately the, 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 um, these, uh, these lamprey getting into the Great Lakes has caused mass mortality of native fish like the lake trout, as mm -hmm. well as white fish, uh, they, they, they eat any native fish uh, and invasive fish and fish as well, including salmon, which salmon weren't originally uh, a part of the Great Lakes. Wow. Now I have heard from a little birdie, maybe just Aaron, <laughs> um, that we might have some actual lamprey here. Uh, can we take a look at them? <laughs> yeah, for sure. So. Um, I do, uh, I, I do a lot of uh, work in collaboration with the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, and they were kind enough to let me uh, borrow a couple, a couple of live sea lamprey. Um, now, a word of caution with these guys, um, they, ha uh, they caught them last year in the fall before ice up, so these haven't actually eaten in about four months, so I've heard they're very hungry right now. Um, but these are just little guys, you can take a look at them in here. So there's two of them in here. Oh. Now, there's a difference in coloration. Is that just natural, or um, how might we tell the difference between kind of female and male lampreys? Uh, yeah. So um, I'm, I'm not too sure how to tell the difference from these two, but uh, in the last, uh, in that um, spawning one that I showed you, that was in a tube. Uh, that one has a, a very thick uh, dorsal fin. Oh. So that one shows uh, it is that that one is a male, and. Uh, I, I could I could take these out to uh, to show you. Oh, guys that would be really cool. Um, so, gotta be careful here. They are hungry, um, <laughs> but this is uh, this is an invasive sea lamprey. Right? And we're taking them out of the water. How long can they be out of the water for? Uh, they could survive out of the water for quite a long time. So when they swim, they actually they actually close their mouths together so they could swim efficiently. But then when they want to latch onto something, they have this. Uh, they have this mouth here that opens up and it's like wow. a big suction cup. And I don't know if you can see the teeth there. And how many teeth oh, do yeah. they have? I'm not too sure. <laughs> it looks like a lot. <laughs> yeah. So w when they're swimming along, um, um, they could swim right underneath the fish and they'll actually suction right on. I'll see if I get this guy to do it to me. <laughs> yeah, so they suction right on there and he can actually... That's He's so, so strong cool. he could stay there without me holding on to him. Now how do you get him off? Um, I don't know. I haven't. I haven't. <laughs> I haven't ever made it this far before. <laughs> uh, uh, so these guys, uh, they suction on really tight, and they're actually like very difficult to pull off. And they have a very raspy tongue. So that raspy tongue well, is is like sandpaper, and they could actually. Oh, oh Oakley, <laughs> Oakley <this> <laughs> careful! Your dad's not getting attacked. <laughs> Well, oh, kind of. Um, <laughs> but the raspy tongue will actually sandpaper uh, the skin off of fish, mm -hmm. and that's how they start to suck the blood from fish. Um, now, that does sound very terrifying, and uh, it sounds very worrisome, but that's okay because these guys will only ever uh, drink or eat cold-blooded animals. So mm -hmm. fish are cold-blooded animals. As soon as this guy realizes that um, I, I'm a warm-blooded animal, uh, he won't actually try to eat me. So um, in terms of running into them in the wild, they're not going to attach to humans. No, no, you, you, you won't go swimming on the St. Mary's River and worry about this, uh, you know, attaching to your leg or anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, they might try to latch on to you, but they won't actually, they'll never actually bite you or anything and they won't cause any harm um but yeah and, and this one's a this one's a fairly young one too. this is a young adult um so yeah they, they get a little bit bigger than this but i'll try to take this guy off here if i can 
We might have to walk around with him with like a... Oh, there we go. Oh, he actually did get some blood. <laughs> <laughs> but as you can see, it's not much of a mark. Um, no. It's kind of like a, just a suction area. So you can see it's all its little teeth marks in there. Well, thanks for doing that for us, Aaron. I don't know if I would be as brave. <laughs> Yeah. It was all by his own choice. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, it does look like a, like a bit of a red mark, but it, it didn't hurt at all. Um, yeah. It, and they actually have, um, they have uh, um, an anticoagulant uh, in, their, in their spit, I guess. Um, so that's just something that uh, uh, makes it so if they, if they make an animal bleed, the, they don't stop bleeding, mm -hmm. so that the, the wound the wound doesn't heal. That. Yeah, but yeah, th those are uh, our little sea lamprey. Well, they're not friends, but uh, they're our little sea lamprey um, <laughs> visitors, I suppose. <laughs> Great, and um, yeah. So you talked a little bit about the effects on the native fish. Um, so are there ways of mitigating and um, getting rid of these sea lamprey in the areas? Yeah, yeah. So uh, th these fish, uh, these uh, invasive species, have been around since uh, since the mid 1900s uh, in our area. And uh, the Department of Fisheries, Fisheries and Oceans, they developed uh, this this chemical called uh, TFM, uh, which is a, a lampricide, uh, which um, they do uh, spray in lots of rivers all throughout the Great Lakes. And it's a very uh, very selective chemical that. Uh, is uh, is strong enough to kill um, baby sea lamprey when mm -hmm. they're in their uh, when they're in their young stages when they're still filter feeding. Uh, so that's something that gets commonly uh, sprayed throughout the Great Lakes. Um, however, uh, the Garden River and uh, Garden River First Nation and the DFO are working together to find uh, uh, alternative methods to sea lamprey control. Mm -hmm. um, so those methods uh, might involve uh, pheromones, uh, other chemicals, or figuring out how to trap them uh, when they start to spawn upstream for their uh, um, for mating. Wow, very interesting. Yeah. Um, so I guess, are we ready to almost wrap it up here? Uh, if you want to share anything about Garden River or what you do, any last thoughts, uh, feel free. This is the platform for you. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So um, I, another thing that uh, Garden River First Nation is doing um, to kind of uh, assist this uh, gaining more knowledge about sea lamprey is uh, we're conducting an indigenous knowledge study about sea lamprey. Um, so uh, the Garden River people, the Ojibwe and Anishinaabek people, uh, we've been here since uh, for a very long time, <laughs> at least since the last ice age. And so uh, we have a lot of uh, ecological information about this area. So. Um, what, uh, what this sea lamprey indigenous knowledge study is going to be about is uh, I'm going to talk to elders, harvesters, and fishermen uh, from around my own community to see how uh, to learn about the changes that sea lamprey have caused in our own uh, aquatic environment. Oh, and we have a Mega Z flying up behind us. That's, cool. That's nice. <laughs> uh, Mega Z is, uh, is an eagle that's just uh, flying around back there. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I, oh, and, and one more thing about, uh, um, about sea lamprey as well. Um, they don't just uh, harm native fish by eating them. Uh, they also uh, bring a lot of contaminants into, into the aquatic environment. Uh, they have uh, uh, contaminants like mercury and PCBs um, that concentrates within their body. So when they do their uh, spawn, upstream into places like the Garden River, they actually bring these uh, harmful contaminants into pristine river ecosystems. And when they die, they leave those uh, harmful contaminants in the rivers. Yeah. yeah. And is there a way of removing those contaminants at the moment or? Mm. I'm not too sure. Yeah. 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 I don't know a whole lot about that. Yeah. No worries. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Thanks, Aaron, so much for everything you did today, with especially with the lamp <laughs> break. Uh, and then we'll be seeing you guys, uh, I believe, later today, even though this is in the past. Uh, so see you later. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Mafi.